Welcome back. Chapter 14.2, Feynman Diagrams, coming from the Walding textbook following the Queensland Physics Curriculum. What we're looking at today is how particle interactions that we've discussed get uh, shown through a diagram. There's a nice little uh, joke there for you on the screen. Right, so we're talking about Feynman Diagrams, and basically it's named after Richard Feynman, a very famous uh, American physicist. Lots of uh, different things that he's come up with. He's, he's um, <clears throat> known for discovering a huge range of things. Even uh, got himself the Nobel Prize at one point there. And he's basically, we're talking about his uh, diagrams that he came up with to describe how particle interactions occur. He was pretty much a uh, household name back in his day. Um, and something interesting that he did do, he worked on how to enrich uranium for use in an atomic bomb. And this is the sort of technology that became part of the Manhattan Project, which was the project to create a atomic bomb that ended World War II. Bill Gates spoke quite highly of him as the best teacher I never had. And there's a nice little video there that you can check out later. All right, so what are we aiming to do today? We're gonna to explain what Feynman diagrams are, and specifically we're gonna talk about these three here. Three different examples that you need to uh, basically recall. So. By the end of this, you should be able to read and understand what these Feynman diagrams are. All right, so it's just a diagram that we use to interact and inter to illustrate an interaction between particles. It's not necessarily the true path of particles. It's just a graphical way of showing how particles can interact with each other. We have time on the x-axis and space on the y-axis, but we can reverse it if we really want to. There's an example there, all right? So you can see times there, and it's almost like this y-axis that's not shown is like a spatial axis. So in this scenario, we have an electron interacting with a positron, and the mediating particle is a photon there. We'll get into what that means. All right, so conventions. Generally, space goes on the vertical, the y-axis, time goes on the horizontal, or the x-axis. Number two, we represent the particles as straight line arrows in the direction of time. And we usually put a letter on there to tell us what particle they are. So we've got an electron there and an electron neutrino there traveling forward through time. But that arrow moving from left to right is showing that. Number three, if it's an antiparticle, we show its arrow as pointing backwards in time. It doesn't necessarily mean that we think that antiparticles are traveling backwards through time. It's just how we're showing it. So there's an anti-electron neutrino and a positron shown with their arrows pointing to the left, meaning they go backwards in time. Number four, the bosons, which are those uh, particles that mediate the forces, the four fundamental forces of the universe. We're really only describing three of them with our bosons. Uh, we have a little squiggly line and we write on it which particular boson it is. So we have a gamma particle there and a W plus boson. So, number one, define your axes. Number two, draw a solid line with an arrow pointing forward in time for your fermions. That's your quarks, your leptons, your neutrinos and so on. An arrow backwards in time for the antimatter particles. Like that. So our electron is this guy here, pointing forward in time. Positron is the antimatter version of it, pointing backwards in time. Draw a wavy line to represent the photon or the uh, or a W or Z boson, because they're our bosons that mediate the forces. So we're saying that an electron and a positron are coming together here in an interaction. Uh, we draw a wavy line, uh, sorry, number four, generally not in the syllabus, uh, for grade 12 level, but a cur curly line generally represents what a gluon looks like. But we don't really have to worry about that one. All right, so another little summary of it. The lines represent the particles. The vertices, or which is where the lines sort of come together, represent the actual interactions. The particles are emitted or absorbed or deflected or bounce off each other or change type or something like that. Um, on the left-hand side of the interaction are the particles coming into the interaction, and on the right-hand side is the particles going out. 
The vertices can be joined by internal lines which represent the virtual particles or the bosons or those, those force carriers, those particles that mediate the forces between um, objects, be it things like the photon, the W boson, Z boson, that sort of thing. Uh, a vertex usually has three lines attached to it. There's going to be the two fermions, that's the two particles that are interacting with each other. So maybe it's like the example before, an electron and a positron, and a boson line, the squiggly one which is basically the, the photon that's mediating the force between those two. Uh, and usually there's some incoming ones and outgoing ones. Here's another example. Now, this is one that's probably worth learning, an electron and electron interaction. So uh, repulsion of what we have is an electron and electron coming near each other and repelling each other. And the force that mediates that repulsion is what we is carried by these bosons that we call photons. All right, so photons are causing those two electrons to physically repel each other. It's almost like this virtual photon is trans or uh, transmitted between the two electrons, and that creates the force of repulsion between them. And hence, you see them as it's almost like they physically bounce off each other, so to speak, or come close to each other, and that uh, repulsion, that electrostatic repulsion, pushes them away from each other. Right, this uh, Bahaba scattering is a little bit of a different example and it seems a little bit um, counterintuitive. Named after someone who, funny enough, is not a dead white guy like everything else that we talk about in this course. You can look him up if you like. What we have here is an electron and a positron bouncing off each other. You can see that they come close to each other. There's a photon that mediates the force of repulsion between the two of them and they bounce off each other. And the electron almost goes off on his way, the positron goes off on his way, but no, it's antimatter, so we're showing its arrows going backwards in time. We don't mean the, the positron's travelling backwards in time, we're just saying that's how we show the uh, antimatter, and it's like they're bouncing off each other. They didn't change into anything else. In this case, the two didn't combine with each other and annihilate to form uh, photons of light. It's just a possible interaction. And again, learn this one. Here's probably what you're sort of thinking of, of the electron-positron annihilation. And this is a bit of another funny example. The electron and positron annihilate into a photon, and then that photon is then, like in this pair production, becomes another electron and positron. So my electron and my positron comes in, and through this point in here, it's like they annihilate each other and form that photon but then it produces another one. Think of this as a probability thing, and it's like, is it possible that this interaction can occur? Most certainly is. So you should remember this one as well. Right, beta negative decay. So this is um, beta negative. So it is a neutron that is decaying. Now, this is part of um, radioactive decay that we looked at back in unit one mediated by the weak nuclear force, which is our W bosons. Now, because this is beta negative decay, we have a W negative proton. Now, what's going on here? First of all, we have our neutron that comes in and it's almost like here's where the event occurs, the actual decay. A neutron changes into a proton. That is caused by our W negative boson, which is shown by that squiggly line. And then you can see a short period later, the W negative boson decays into an electron and an electron antineutrino, those two there. Okay, there's a nice little um, summary on the left hand side there. And my other Feynman diagram over here just takes it a little step further, where it shows you the three quarks that come in and how they change. A neutron is an up quark and two down quarks, a proton is two ups and a down. So you can physically see that one of our um, down quarks has changed into an up quark, and it's the W for, uh, boson, the W negative one in particular, that helped that happen, which then decayed into our other products of the radioactive decay. Bit of positive decay, same sort of thing. It's a bit of positive decay, so it's a proton, and it's a W plus boson 
but it's essentially exactly the same thing, except the products this time are beta positive decay. It is a positive electron or a positron, and we don't have the antimatter version this time. We just have an electron neutrino produced. Note, because we don't have the little line on top like we do with the antimatter, which would be the with the little line on top like that. That's the antimatter version. We don't have that. We've got the normal matter version. And over the other side here, you can see that our up quark has changed into a down quark. And that's what physically changed the proton into a neutron. In all of these, you should check that your lepton number and baryon number that we discussed in the last section are conserved. And if you'd like, you can go back, pause the video, go back and have a look at them, count the leptons and baryons each time and make sure we have conservation there. There's some examples for further reading. Another nice little XKCD cartoon. I recommend you check out him. They're pretty funny. So the syllabus says, can you explain the following interaction of the particles using Feynman diagrams? Can you draw those situations? All right. I suggest you go back, learn them, and just remember them for your final exam. Might like to do this challenge with another partner, take a bit of time to learn the diagrams, and then draw one for a partner and explain it to them and see if they give you good marks for it. All right, so we spoke about electron, electron scattering, electron positive scattering, electron and positron scattering and annihilation, and a neutron decaying into a proton. You should be able to recall those, go back and learn them, so make sure they're in your memory. Time to have a crack at the check your learning stuff. Do, do some of those questions to um, make sure you've got this stuff right in your brain.